Hey folks, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, since this is August now, so we are on um, when this originally first aired Boxing Day, I think, 2023. This is part of my 12 days, pardon me, 12 months, 12 days, 12 hauls series of videos. So instead of showing you Christmas decorations, I thought I'd show you some books. This is a great book if you're looking for kind of a popular nonfiction chemistry book. This is Sam Keen, The Disappearing Spoon. He's got other ones too, Caesar's Last Breath. Uh, one on anatomy maybe? Possibly another, but really great book. So just a really quick explanation as to why I'm doing my hauls for 2023 this way. I didn't start my channel until September, um, but the hauls that you're seeing weren't filmed in the month that they're for. So this is August 2023, wasn't filmed in August. It was filmed kind of late November, early December. And the reason I'm doing it this way, there's a full detailed explanation in the first video, the January video for this series. But just to, you know, quick, quick summary, um, it's a reality check. It's taking stock for me. Um, you know, getting everything out that I bought in 2023, having it all on my dining room table, splitting it out into months, filming these videos, really made me aware of how much I had bought, reminded me of a lot of the things that I had bought, and, you know, helping me t to remember what I have and encourage me to use what I have instead of buy more. But again, as I always say, you know, everybody has to do their own thing. You, you be you. You do you. And so if the collecting is a more important part of the hobby than the coloring, that's you do you. For me, I was... I was wanting to get back into the coloring side of things. So this is, this is something I'm doing for me. All right, I guess uh, that's it. Once again, great book if you're looking for it. And on we go to August, 2023 and what I bought then. We are on day eight of my 2023 full year coloring haul countdown. So this is August. I thought that I would start with books this time and then we'll do some supplies. This, these two um, books I ordered from, I believe it was Amazon Japan or it could have been Etsy. I apologize. But this is, uh, this is my second copy of this book. So this is, I think it's called Fantasy Towns or Fantasy Main Street, something like that. Um, Coloring with Kay calls it the, the Townscapes book. So I think everyone has seen this one before. It's got the, the lovely tiny images and then colored samples at the front. So my second copy just because I, there's so many just amazing images in here and depending on, they are single sided, but if you color with, um, you know, say stickles or if you use um, glossy accents and it's thicker, then when you go to color, you know, say I did it on this page, then when I go to color on this page, you're gonna get that texture coming through even with a, a page in between sometimes. So it's nice to have a second copy of books that you really love. So that's my second copy of that book. And then I got the postcard book from, I believe it's the same illustrators, Nishimura Noriko and Yuki. They, they strike me as the same kind of, of uh, images. And the postcard book has a colored sample and then the uncolored image next to it, which is kind of neat because then you can either choose to copy what they've done. Now, the book had that as well. It had colored samples at the beginning, but you had to flip all the time. With this postcard book, if you choose to leave the postcard in here and color it, it's right there next to it. So that's neat. I did tear one out here already. Um, yeah, but, and I won't do full flip throughs of, of anything here. If you would like full flip throughs of anything, just let me know. I can find that postcard that I tore out. <laughs> I believe I put it in another little postcard folder I have. I was going to color it, but I don't think I did. Yeah. So there's those. And then I got some books from Amazon. I got Matchstick Mouse Pumpkin Party Coloring Book. Sorry about the glare. I didn't buy the storybook, so I just bought the, the coloring book. This is printed on, it's still Amazon paper. Now, I did get this from the States, from Amazon US, because I think I was ordering some gel pens, and so I just 
threw it on that order instead of Amazon Canada. I don't know how the premium paper compares to, between Amazon Canada and the US. It'd be something for me to look at in the future. But this paper is, I don't know if it's thicker, it's smoother, and it's like it has this sort of canvas or maybe like a watercolor texture, but it's not actual texture. It's printed on, I don't know if you can see that. See that? A little bit. It's like it's modeled. So you're not coloring on a white surface. You're coloring on, it, it's almost like a really pale oatmeal. That's what it reminds me of. But yeah, this is the, so there's a story to go with the images. I love Matchstick Mouse. She's so cute. And then I got two Creative Haven books. I got Teresa Goodrich, her Autumn Harvest coloring book. So, again, I think everybody's seen these images. Lots of very sweet things in here with, she's started to put more gnomes, as my daughter used to say when she was little, <laughs> gnome. Uh, pictures in her books. She, of course, has the whole Gnome Sweet Gnome book, which is the second um, Creative Haven book that I purchased in, in August. So I've got the gnomes in different seasons, different holidays. There's Christmas. Yeah. I also picked up these two books from Amazon. So this is Karen E. Myers, A Mystical Land's Christmas, and this is book one and book two. I had already purchased book three last year, I think. Um, Cause I don't think these are new. I'm just gonna check the date here. Yeah, this is 2019, so these aren't new. Now why I had book three, but not books one and two, I don't know, <laughs> but I did. Uh, these ones I did pick up, I think they're both from Yep, Amazon Canada. So a little bit better paper. She has two copies of the images in her books. So uh, you could have a, a second chance in case you mess the first one up. She names all her images and she always has this border. It's like a, almost like a Celtic knot pattern around the edge, which I like because particularly in the spine in the crease of the book, it means that you don't feel like you have to put, even if you're putting a background, I don't have to get right in there, right? I can stop at that, the, the border there, and that's, that's kind of nice. So yeah, there's Mystical Land's Christmas, and then Mystical Land's Christmas Book 2. She just has very, well, mystical, right, images. She has a very unique style, I think. Again, if anybody wants a full flip of any of these, just let me know. So those were the books that I got in August. And for supplies, I picked up, um, it's here, I already took one out, but this is the Ann Art 100 glitter gel pens. They don't come with refills. So this was kind of a replacement pack for, you know, I'll be pulling colors from here that I run out of in my, my first pack that I have. So that's what I got for uh, those four in August. And you'll have seen in July that I had gotten some of the Schmincke uh, Super Granulation paints, and I got a few more in August. I don't have them all. And I think I'll probably just stick with these. I, I, I don't think I will get any more. I played with them a little bit just on scrap paper, but I haven't done a background with them yet. And that was really what I got them for. Because I think that because of the texture they create. Now I know on non-watercolor paper and with not a lot of water, you're not going to get, you know, really dramatic granulation. But I think I st still should get enough that... I think they would work well for things like rocks, right? So you've got texture um, with your painting. So this is the um, Deep Sea Trio. So again, there's 
to show you, just like we did in July. These are the little five mil tubes. And for each of these sets, there are, I think, five. So this is a deep sea trio, but there are actually five deep sea paints. But I just got the trio. So this has deep sea violet, deep sea blue, and deep sea green. Five mil tubes. And then I just put them into um, pans here. So we've got, I think this is deep sea blue here and then deep sea green and that's deep sea violet, believe it or not, that mottled brown looking one. <laughs> that's the deep sea violet, I believe in there. And I just put them in half pans that I had, empty half pans, and then put them in this little tin, which again, I had from somewhere. And there's some swatches. So there's the deep sea blue, the deep sea green, and there's the deep sea violet there. And then I bought two, yeah, two of these little, it was kind of like an open stock thing. So I got haze black and haze blue. And so haze black is there, there. There's haze blue, it's there. And I think that means that I have all five of the haze colors because um, I had haze brown, indigo and pink from July because I had the haze trio. And then I bought haze blue and haze black open stock. And I think that's the only one I have all five colors from the set. I also grabbed a few of, because they sell these in the small five mil tubes and they also sell them, I think they sell them in 15 mil tubes as well. And sometimes they'll sell them as pre-poured half pans. So you can tell probably quite easily the ones, the half pans that are full and look professionally poured. Oh, sorry, there's a glare there. Um, so that one, that one, that one, that one. And that one, those five, plus that one there, those I bought. And these other half pans that look very not professionally poured, <laughs> those are ones that I did. So the ones where I bought half pans pre-poured pre were um, three of the Shire colors. So Shire Blue, Shire Olive, Shire Yellow. It's those first three. And then Forest Brown and Forest Olive. That's there and there. And Tundra Pink right there. So that gave me four of the Tundra colors. Um, yeah, three, three of the Shire, two of the Forest. So it, yeah, a variety. I didn't get all five of, of any of them except the Haze colors. So yeah, I need to do more playing with those in terms of just backgrounds. Um, foliage, like foliage in a background kind of thing. I think they'd work well for that. Anything where you just want a little bit of texture, really. I think those came from Jackson's Art, or possibly some of them came from a store here in Canada. Well, it's in Alberta um, called Delta Art. I will often order uh, from them as well. Also from Jackson's Art, I picked up and I think you've, you guys have probably seen me use this before in the video I did where I was comparing blenders. This is the Holbein colored pencil blender. And you buy a pen, which already has some of the liquid in it. It's double-ended. So it has, you can see, I definitely used it. My tip is kind of dirty. Uh, it has a brush end and it's like a, like a fiber nib. And then sort of a larger bullet end. But the great thing is you can also purchase refill. So to refill it, I just flip the top up here, drip it usually onto the, the brush end, kind of let it soak in, you know, kind of drip it on until it seems to be sort of stopping absorbing it. And then, yeah, because I've always, I've always wanted a refill pen or a pen that's refillable to blend out um, color pencil. And I know a lot of people use alcohol marker colorless blenders, but if you look back at that video that I did where I was comparing blenders, they don't work the best. And there's a reason for that. It has to do with something called polarity. <laughs> so you can take a look at that video. I'll see if I remember to, to um, link it below. But uh, 
yeah, so this combined with the Derwent blender pen, these two together, you pretty much have, you can blend almost anything you would want. The Holbein pen not only blends certain colored pencils, but also watercolor pencils. So, you know, you've got this. The Derwent blender pen tends to blend more of those. Um, it works really well for, um, if I remember correctly, it was like polychromos. And so this worked better for, well, Holbein's and maybe Prismacolor. So, you know, between these two, you've sort of got a, a full, a full spectrum blending little, little grouping here. So yeah, I was really, really quite happy with, with this purchase. And again, pretty sure that was Jackson's art, which makes me think those paints were maybe Jackson's art too. I got some more of the Thule Art um, paint pens. I have all of the colored sets. So they have, let's grab one here. There, I got one. It has sets like this. Now this is assorted yellows and browns. They have, sorry for the glare there. There. They have assorted yellows and browns. Um, they have reds and oranges maybe. And then blues, greens, grays. And they have them in both the medium tip and the fine tip. And so I do have all of those sets. I should use them more. But then they came out with some new sets. Now, as of now, we're in, I'm not filming this in August, but um, they also have more sets that I don't have. So I think they had like a Southwestern set. I think I'm, I'm going to stomp on the want monster. And I'm going to say, Connie, you do not need those sets. Do not buy them. But back in August, I did cave and they have these jewel tone um, pens. And so we've got, this is the medium. So the medium tip is, and you can see they're all numbered on the back of the packaging. They give you the numbers with color names so you can match them up. I tend to not swatch, I did. I, when I first bought my, you know, the beginning sets of, of acrylic paint pens, I prime them all and swatch them, but they're more likely to dry out, right? So if I'm not going to use these right away, I won't, I won't pump and, and prime. But that's the medium tip, in case anybody, I'm sure you guys have all seen those. So they have them in the medium tip and then the same colors in, they call it the extra fine tip. And so that's, the medium tip is that kind of fiber nib and then the fine tip is that plastic, right? That plastic nib. And again, I haven't pumped and primed these because I haven't used that color yet. I don't want to have it dry out before it's time. So there's matching colors there. And then I got the pastel. So again, medium tip, extra fine tip. They're just, it just looks like ice cream, doesn't it? <laughs> And so again, we've got color names and numbers on the back there. You do have fun names, Lullaby, Khaki, Robin's Egg. One of them's called Yoda. So yeah, medium and extra fine of those. And then one last supply for August, these. Now these are the Mylang uh, watercolor paints, which I believe if I'm correct, um, I'll open this up just to get rid of the glare here. That's the same logo as the Pretty Excellent paints, which Lindsay the Frugal Crafter really recommends as a really great sort of student grade watercolor paint. And she's reviewed the 36 set of the Pretty Excellent paints, you know, thought they were great. I saw this one for sale and I think it, it even was on sale. And um, it has 36 regular colors. And then it had 12 metallic iridescent colors. And then it came with a water brush as well, which they normally do. It comes in this tin, although mine came, it was kind of beat up and the, the plastic insert here is, is cracked, which neither here nor there. 
Each of these was individually wrapped, so I had to unwrap them. And there was a color name and number on the, the little wrapping for the half pan, but then nothing on the pan itself. So I just took a permanent Sharpie, the fine tip one, and wrote the name and then color number on each little half pan, just so that, um, because they, they it comes with this swatch card, so I swatched everything there, just so that if I drop this and they all come springing out and then they're all mixed up, at least I, I it's easier for me to put them back in order to then match up with this. That's, that's why I did that. But yeah, these iridescent colors here remind me very much of the Paul Rubens metallic paints. So that's the ones here. You know, we've got flash red, right? That's, that's flash red is, is very flashy in the Paul Rubens. So it reminds me of that flash purple, flash blue, that fruit green. I remember. Yeah. And then just a really great selection of, um, 36, just, you know, your, your kind of basic colors. We've got some nice yellow ochres, siennas, Prussian blues there. And you do get pigment information. Now, it didn't come on the wrapping, and it's not given here unless it's the Japanese that's given, or the Chinese, I'm not sure, that's given there. I don't know. But on the packaging for the paints, there was this kind of clear sleeve that uh, there was a box that this tin came in. And on the clear sleeve, you've got this color swatch, which is. Um, you know, whether that's it's true to the colors or not, it's printed, right? But on this color swatch, there is, I don't know if I can do this, it's very, nope, lights not, filming lights not gonna let me do that. <laughs> you know, let's just take my word for it. But there are um, pigment numbers for all the paints given here. So, you know, magenta, you've got PR149, our white is PW4, our black is a combination of PBK7 and PBK6. It does have stars, which I'm assuming is light fast ratings. I don't know what kind of testing they did. Uh, there's also squares, which are either filled in or not, or with a slash. I'm assuming that's some indication of opacity. So what they're saying here is the white is quite opaque. Um, the emerald green is sort of opaque, right? The light sky blue is opaque. Like, I think that's what they're saying. But yeah. So 36 plus 12, so you've got 48 paints in here. This is a really great set to just, you know, you've got the colors that you would need. You've got, you can do mixing and make more colors. Plus you've got these uh, metallics and iridescence here. This flashing pearl is really pretty, put over top of other colors. So yeah, I think it, I think it is a pretty, made of Arabic gum, gum Arabic. Yeah, a little water brush. It's a great set and that is all we had for august so thanks for sticking with um i hope you're safe i hope you're well and i hope you're enjoying your coloring and i hope you join me tomorrow for day nine of our 2023 coloring hall countdown we will go on to september all right till tomorrow bye <laughs>